valiance. On this beautiful topic, which I will review very soon. Hallelujah. Let's get our guest this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Shegun Adete, all the way from Abel Kuta. Let's, you're welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Brother Ebenezer of Buffemi, all the way from Akure. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Let's keep clapping until our guests arrive. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Sister Tumiche Oseni. Joining them also on the table is our beloved brother, Brother Tolu Akinlaja. Uh, lastly, today, please welcome with me Sister Olabodi Evangeline. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm your host on this talk show today, Dixon Hakilolu. <laughs> uh, our guest being seated, we'll be discussing a very sweet, uh, very important, and very lovely topic today, which is very, very important in a gathering like this. And at least this gathering won't be complete without this. Uh, the topic is friendship and marriage. Can we put our hands together for that? Well, if the Lord has told you that you're going to be a celibate and you are in this hall today, it's still very okay. Everybody will not marry. That's the reality. But then learn for somebody else so that you can also instruct somebody who wants to marry beside you. Because I know that brother sitting beside you wants to marry. And that sister is already praying to God for where is the will of God. So if you feel that uh, all these things, all these things, I'm sold out to the Lord, just learn for somebody beside you. You have a younger sister, you have an older sister. The Lord Jesus will strengthen us in Jesus' name. Uh, let's set the ball rolling this morning. Uh, the first question here goes to our brother, Brother Shegun Adeite. What practical step will you take if you wanted to make a new friend without offending the laws of Christ. Praise God. Amen. 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 Good morning, Daddy. Uh, good morning, Mommy. Uh, good morning, Mama. Good morning, uh, Pastor Tosin. Uh, good morning to our pastors in the house. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, house. Good morning to our online audience also. Uh, um, I appreciate uh, the privilege given to me to be here today. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma. Amen. Uh, what practical step uh, would I take if I wanted to make a new friend without offending the law of Christ? Amen. Amen. Firstly, uh, to start with, uh, I believe the reason for friendship must have been established. Uh, the reason for friendship must have been established. Uh, my steps in making friendship, in making a friend, must, amidst us, must be propelled by the truth and the love of Christ. And how do, how, how do I go about this? How can this reason be established? Uh, the step I will take is that I must have study and listen to the messages that has been uh, preached on this platform. And the Lord has helped our daddy uh, and mommy to unveil truth as regards this uh, friendship and relationship. 
and through lively friends and partners, and a lot of light has been shed on this matter. So I must make sure, and I will go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. Oh, sorry, uh, that's Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Thank you. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So as I was saying, I must have studied this message, observe them. I must observe them. Uh, allow this message to sink into my understanding, then having understood them, then the next step is that I will now uh, start, set out to deliberately act on them. Deliberately act. The reason why I said this is because uh, I will not just assume I know what friendship is all about. There is an idea of friendship in the mind of an unbeliever and also in the mind of a carnal believer. Uh, they feel they know what friendship is about. Is it not just my friend or Remini? Um, you know, being a friend to, his, uh, to someone because of the benefits or advantage that you feel you will gain from the person. There is a general idea of friendship. But in the church of God, uh, according to second, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 said, But I, if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how to... How Thou us to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. It means in the church there are uh, conducts that we must observe, uh, that are according to righteousness that we, mo that we must observe uh, in order to uh, do things in the right way, according to the revealed pattern. Everything we do must be revealed. I can't just use my sense, uh, this is how to make friends. No, I must follow the reveal pattern as God has helped our daddy and our pastors in the house to shed light on this matter. Then having done that, allow the message to sink into my understanding. Again, my intentions must be clear. For example, I should not just uh, set out to be a friend with a sister because with the intention of getting married to her, that should not be my uh, motive. That should not be because the purpose of friendship is not because of marriage at first. It is not because of marriage. The purpose of friendship, and as God used our daddy, our daddy, Pastor Thompson, to also shed light on that the reason for relationship is for increase and for growth. According to Ephesians chapter uh, 4. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Can we go there? Verse 15. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Okay. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, uh, may grow up unto him. And the next verse, he was talking about increase. So the essence of friendship is for growth, for increase. And through correction, rebuke, instruction, we provoke one another unto love and good works. It's for us to have a fortress in the gospel and to fulfill the high calling of God upon our lives. The hope the general hope that God has set for us is the hope of eternal life. That's the reason for friendship. Then, so my intentions must be clear on that. Then after that, I must not be uh, locked on one person. Uh, I must cultivate friendship with many, both male and female alike. I must not just attach myself to one person, you know, like, I just like the way this person looks. I like, I just like, I just like this person. Then you lock yourself up with that person and you are, you know, you don't open yourself up to the rest of the brethren. That's uh, a pitfall that I must avoid. I must not be locked up to one person. And according to Acts chapter 2, verse 46, Acts chapter 2, verse 46, and they continue daily uh, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, we can see that there is a unity. They are integrated into one another. It's not as if I'm just locked up with this person, but it's a community. I open my heart to everyone. So that's uh, another step I must take uh, in making a new friend, so not to offend the law of Christ. And uh, again, I must reach out politely, greet well, uh, honor and respect must uh, characterize my relationship, it's uh, my conversation. I must, genuinely, I must genuinely serve the brethren, serving them, pouring out my life to the community. 
you know, giving myself to activities and everything going on in the house. I must serve. I must genuinely love them and care for them. That's uh, less, uh, according to First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. He said, Honor all men, uh, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. So in I must learn to honor them, and I must learn to uh, I must also learn to love them. Right. I must learn to follow this code that has been laid in the scriptures. Wow! Yes, for now. Thank. Thank you, you so much. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so all of these are the laws of Christ that we must have learned before we can proceed into using them. It's not something that, because everybody has an idea that, you be friend, I have been, I have friends from childhood, but in our streets, we are all friends. <laughs> and so you carry that mindset to mean that that your friendship that you run out there is the same thing as that in the church. You will run foul. <laughs> you will misbehave. You must be taught. You must learn. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Brother Data, for that. Uh, over to you, sir, Brother Ebenezer. Uh, how can a single brother or sister manage friendship without emotional entanglement? You know, that, 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 that's the issue. <laughs> that, uh, 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 dube, dube. That's where you hear dube, dube. That emotion thing, that is the wahala that makes people to just, this thing is not, let's just throw it away. This thing, I beg. Because emotion can easily be involved when it comes to brother and sister. So how can we manage that without emotional entanglement? All right. Thank you very much, sir. Um, good morning, Daddy. Good morning, Mommy. Good morning, Patatosi. I also greet my pastors in the house. I greet uh, our Hanko, Pastor Dixon. Thank you very much sir, for this opportunity given to me to participate in this talk show. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, I would like to start by saying that um, we need to understand the purpose of friendship. Now, because if the purpose of a thing is not known, then the abuse is inevitable. Okay, you must understand the fact that friendship is not for emotional gratification. Okay, friendship is a commitment of purpose and destiny in God. So that is, friendship is primarily for salvation. So when that is established, then that will help our conduct in the friendship. Yeah. Now, I would also like to say that, uh, that is something uh, sometimes ago, of course, that it has taught us and said a lot of things you know, in order for us to, be, to, to behave and to conduct and to have a healthy friendship. And I said some things, uh, some things a few weeks ago. He said that um, for you, before you can be a good friend, as it is in the heart of God, that is to be a kingdom friend, now you, you must first of all learn how to be a good brother or a good sister. Mm. Now that one is very important. And how do you be or can you learn to be a good brother or a sister? Now, according to the book of First Peter chapter 1, verse 22, now it says that seeing therefore, it says seeing, uh, 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 seeing that ye purify your soul in obeying the truth through the Spirit, okay, unto a feign love of the brethren. Now, in the school of brotherhood, that's where you learn the truth, and in learning the truth, you are getting your soul being purified. So as they are purifying our soul, they are also treating our love. Now because normally, naturally, no natural man can love sincerely. Our love is either give and take. Our love is selfish. So it is truth that we purify our love. So, it is, so, so that you don't you know, get, to, uh, to get to an assembly and jump into making friends. You misbehave so many times. Okay, but first of all, you, 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 you must first of all learn the brotherhood's life. So it is in that point that they begin to treat our love. So from there, we cannot, from there, we now have sincere love towards our brother, towards our sister. So that one is very, very important. Now then, another thing is that, now we will ensure that 
our, you know, our thoughts and actions are guided by wisdom of purity. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, according to the book of um, uh, First Timothy, when Paul was, uh, was addressing Timothy, uh, in the book of First Timothy chapter 5, verse 2, now, how, how he should uh, uh, treat the aged women and also sisters. It says, the elder women as mothers, as the younger as sisters with all purity. Now, we must understand purity. Purity is, purity is every conversation that can be found in truth. So that's purity. So any conversation that cannot be found in truth should not be seen or should not, be, should not occur, should not be seen in our friendship. So now truth, that's why that's what lead me to, to another point, that truth should be the basis of our friendship. What is truth? Truth is a revealed life of Christ. Truth is a doctrine of Christ that, you know, that, 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 that have been coming via instructions that our daddy and our pastor have been teaching us every day. So now we must allow truth you know, be the center part of our friendship. Now another thing is this. We must not also allow emotions okay, to come into our friendship. Of course, at times we can have some, you know, some, some, some ticklings. Now, but many at times we take those ticklings to be love. Okay, maybe some, maybe the person, you know, did some things and you are intrigued by it, and you know, you feel ah, like, wow, this person is. No, you don't mm. take that. Okay, it's not because how do you know that that tricking is true? Mm. Now, is that give it time or let the person offend you if, if you just feel the same way? Mm. Okay, so now, so, so, so it's good. Beautiful. Amen. So now, it's good that I don't have that emotion because, and again, once I also feel that many of our young, you know, young brothers and sisters, we take feelings to be love. Mm. But love is not feelings. We've been taught that love is a knowledge. Yeah. Hallelujah. So then, then another thing also that I also like us to look into. Now, we must not allow our chemistry to rule us. Yes, of course, we, we, we have chemistry. But mind you, the chemistry is not, not physics. Physics sparks. Chemistry can be controlled. Go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now, according to, book, uh, according to what, what, what Paul said in, uh, in, the, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, now he said, all things are lawful, but not, but, but all, but, but, but not all things are expedient. Now, the part B says that I will not be brought under the power of any. Now, it takes valiant man to make friends. Now, under the power. So that means it takes power to also, you know, to, to, to not have, allow yourself to be brought under the power of that emotion. So that, that is, you must not allow your emotion to rule you. Yeah. Okay? Because if your emotion should rule you, your emotion will ruin you mm. at, at the same hand. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Can, can you put your hands together? If your emotion rules you, your emotion will ruin if you don't tame your crutches, your crutches will end you up in crutches. That's beautiful, sir. It's possible. A generation can, can express pure friendship. And that is what the church is all about. That is why we are being purified daily by truth. So when you come into church, you are not looking for, I want to, uh, they say this friendship here, yeah, I like this one. That thing that is making you to choose must be dealt with by truth. You know, it's like we start in faith and end in love. We don't start with love eh, and end in faith. We start with faith. Eh, eh, then we end. Friendship is love. It's pure love. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Brother Femme. Can you appreciate Brother Femme once again? Uh, from the, let's hear from our, our sister today, uh, Sister Tomiche Oseni. You know, when you get close to people, in a money like you know, there are some people you see them afar, you love them. Oh wow, wow! When they dress on Sunday, wow! See, they... but when you get close, you will now begin to see that hey, there are things there. But it's good for us to now know this as single people that are there things in people that mean that they are not marriageable. There are things you will see in somebody you know, that this one is that there are things like that. That when you see them, hmm, is a red pointer to you that says this person is not marriageable. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, mommy. 
Good morning, Pastor Tosin. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, all my pastors in the house. Yes, as you earlier said, Pastor. <laughs> as you walk with people, you will actually see some things in them. It's because you've not walked with them. That's why you think, ah, Benny, Sherry, Lele. But when you walk with them, when you are friends with them, you actually know the things that are in them. So I would say, yes, there are things in people that make them not marriageable. Okay, what are they? Fine, you can, it was said in the Bible, it was said that we should not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. So as a Christian brother or a sister, as a believer, you should not say you want to get married to an unbeliever. You are getting yourself unequally yoked. possible light and darkness cannot work together a fountain does not bring forth both bitter and sweet it's not possible you should not be unequally yoked even as a believer self let's leave that of an unbeliever as a believer especially maybe you are in eternal life embassy you are here there are still some things that you see in people that you just say they are not marriageable. Forget, say, with the year revelation. But we know that God is working on us, actually. We know. And we are changing day by day. Because in friendship, there are so many things that will be exposed. There are habits, natures, and tendencies that will be exposed. It's not as if you cannot accommodate those habits, tendencies, and natures. Because God can actually use us to help our friend. And patience will be worked in us. Long suffering will be worked in us. Even other characters of charity will be worked in us. Then another point I would like to say is a vain or a profane person. You cannot get married to a vain or a profane brother or a sister. And when I mean vain or profane, Somebody who has eyes on other things and not the truth. Mm. We cannot be in this church and then keep the revelation of truth is keep being exposed to us and yet you're, you are not giving your life totally to it. Your eyes is, another, is on other things. Somebody will say, Sharola, Sharola, the movie Jen, yes, it's truth. We will live by truth. We will walk in truth. We will become the truth. So if you see a brother or a sister whose attitude is like, ah, he's not walking in truth. Please, my dear brother and sister, don't even think about marriage with that person. Let me read from the scripture here. Even Paul admonished Timothy and Titus that they should shun vain, vain things. Let me actually read it from the scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. But refuse profane and old wife's fable, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. But shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. They will increase unto more ungodliness. Tobaba warned me, say, Rather, you should exercise yourself mm. unto godliness. Mm. Even, let's see, Esau. He was a vain and a profane man. Because he did not see the value in his birthright. That's why he could sell it for a morsel of meat. I'll read that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one more sell of meat sold his birthright. Wow, he's a brother. <laughs> wow. Sold his birthright. One, ni value for truth. They don't see truth as something valuable. Wow. You cannot marry such a brother or a sister. Mm. Another point I would like to ten, say is People who has violent tendency. Mm. 
who has okay. violent nature. Just like marriages we have, you see the husband beat the wife up. She yawonye ori ni koto fe. Is in true is when you when you when you are when you, when you are friends. That yeah, that's when you will see those things. Except you want to close your eyes and say ah. Mm. But yeah, we will change are, him when we get there. Ah, hey, the Lord will help us. We can, God will work on them, but me, let me work on my own salvation. Let's see. <laughs> yes, you will see the husband beat the wife up. Yes. We have so many. In fact, whether you see a brother or a sister slap someone, if you slap the Lord, man bear it. it starts from there. You will slap someone, you'll be like, oh, it's just a small slap now. There is no, it's not small. The day the brother or sister will punch you, it's coming. Because it will start from there. Because those, those people who are violent always like to exercise authority. They like to exercise authority. It's my own word that should be obeyed. That, uh -uh. Sometimes you have to accept that you are at fault. Another point I will say is those who display hurtful or vengeful tendency. Hmm. You are hurtful in nature. It's not good. It is not good. It is not good. Let me read Bible verses on the violent tendency because we can see it in the scripture. Is in the book of Psalms, chapter 140, verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Mm. Even verse 4 of the same chapter say, Keep me, O Lord, from the ends of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man. Wow. The Bible you. is saying it. So don't say you want to walk with somebody that is violent. Oh, fair, fair. Oh, my pile of Thank you so much. <laughs> Please, let's. Wow. Let us not die before the salvation come. So there are some things you see that you, it's not negotiable. Vengeful nature. The, the day, maybe on your engagement day, the man is supposed, the, your in-law is supposed to give you 40 yam, the man gave you 60. And that brother will never forget. The, later on, he, he will not visit your family. He will not, if your father is sick, he will not treat him. Because he has collected everything he wants to, he collect cow, Abi, he collect cow. Let us give him more, give him. Don't worry. These tendencies, we can see them and don't gloss over them. Don't gloss over them because you are desperate. Uh, let, us share, let us share, do it, let's do it. Ah, The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, let's put hands together for Sister Tumiche. Uh, Brother Tolu. Brother Tolu, Brother Tolu. Uh, how would you advise a brother or a sister who has been waiting on the Lord? Who has been waiting on the Lord for a while for a spouse? You know, you must not be fed up with your present estate. I'll be brother for brother to uh -huh. So, what are your advice to that person? Okay, um, standing on the existing protocol, I greet everybody. I greet daddy, I greet mommy, Pastor Tosi, and welcome, sir, and all my pastors. Okay, uh, this question. <laughs> Well, how would I advise a brother who has been waiting for a while? Not for a while. I, actually, I don't know the extent, but let me just speak. <laughs> let me just speak. Okay. Um, like you rightly said, thank you, Pastor Dixon. Like you rightly said, um, we, first and foremost, I would tell the brother or the sister, or rather, should I say, I would ask the brother or the sister, are you fed up of your single estate? Mm. Let, let, let me start with that. Are you fed up? of your single estate. You know, Daddy has been talking, and which he said emphatically the first day of this meeting, 
when he gave some instances of the past of youths and teenagers then, then he said something strikingly. He said, you should even be happy that you are still a single. Not as though you shouldn't desire the married state. But why waiting? That's, I feel that question tells us that that brother is like, is almost fed up of waiting. Mm. For that, that, that question is coming from someone that is feeling, ah, especially the uh, ladies, so mm. that thought is always there. Mm. You get, so I feel I will tell both the brother or the sister, are you fed up of your single state? Because number one, you shouldn't accommodate anxiety. You shouldn't accommodate agitations from the world around you. Because they, those things will just make you end up making the wrong choice. So emphatically, I will say it. I don't just know. That is so, that is so much of an emphasis. I hope you are not fed up. Because me personally, so, sorry I'm, I'm, I used myself as an example. Sometimes last two weeks, you know, I was, after the church service, I was just in the church. I had so many things doing. I had to go over the messages again. And I thought of myself that, wow. I have this enough time, enough space to even do things, not as though the married cannot do them. Please don't get me wrong. But in that state, you have the mm. time, you have more time, you have more space. Mm. So maximize it. As in, maximally use that space as a single. Because whatever you are able to amass in that state of a single will not just see you through in your married estate, but beyond your married estate. So I will tell the brother or the sister, please, you must, it's a must, enjoy your single estate. Enjoy your single estate. So secondly, I will also tell the brother, that, or the sister rather, that he should kill haste. Please, I don't know, can we all echo it to ourselves? Kill haste. Haste. Kill haste. You know, the, uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 30, from 36 now. Okay, let me read from 37, from 37 first. It said, For yet a little while, he that will come, will come, and he will not what? Tarry. For that brother, yet a little while, the sister that will come, will come, and she will not what? She will not tarry. So, kill is. So, back to verse 36 of that verse. It now said, For ye have need of what? Patience. Uh -uh, it will not tarry. Yet, you need patience. Patience. Mystery. <laughs> wow. So wow. I will tell the brother or the sister, please, kill haste. Mm. Kill haste. You know, Pastor Thompson said something strikingly yesterday. He said, he said it in Ilori, that even when you are 25, you are 30, you are, you know, it's not everybody that will marry. And as well, even if you, are, you have surpassed as it were, what the world calls flower age, still kill haste. Mm. Like our brother rightly said, marriage is not, it's primarily for salvation. So it's not for any other thing. So if you are, of course, if such a person that is looking for salvation will not even be in haste. If actually you have a truth, you are looking for salvation, you will not be in haste. Mm. You know, I look at marriages in the house, I'm like, God, can I actually go into this place? No. Because looking at the, looking at the, the um, how would I say, the things, like that directly said sometimes, there are so many things that God will not deal with you except through your wife. And to your husband. <laughs> so salvation in that sense, actually, if you are looking for salvation, you will even wait because you, are, you should be fearful that, ah. <laughs> okay. So right. you should, such a person should kill haste. You know, um, um, okay. Let me, let me say again that such a person or such a brother should approach the issue with faith. You are waiting. If truly you are waiting, you should approach the issue with faith. No, Pastor, this came out said something when we started. He said, hope you are not the one that, oh, we speak the everlasting, the internal father that head of the manna, this and that. I'll talk to God about your marriage. Mm. Don't overlook it. If, you are, if truly you are waiting, talk to God about that person. And also in that sense, don't have a person in view or a response in view, Lord, I pray for that. You know, most of us, I'm sorry to say this, the guys especially, especially, when you are praying as it's well, okay, you might constantly want to say, let me pray for all the sisters. But when you get to that sister's name, you mention, Lord, I pray for the sister. <laughs> oh, no, no. Don't put anybody in view. <laughs> Just approach, approach God by faith and pray. Simply. Mm. 
Then David said something again in Akure, the meeting, a marriage meeting we had in Akure some two years ago. He said, you should, you should just have the picture of your husband and your wife, but nobody, just pray that, Lord, my husband. The mm. picture is there. So whoever God will put in the picture is left for God to know. It's a so mystery. So you should just pray, approach that issue with faith. Mm. Please do we get up. I would like to read um, Philippians chapter 4, verse... Um, Okay, verse 6 now. Verse 6. He said, be careful for nothing. Let me just take that emphasis. He said, be careful for what? Nothing. nothing but in everything. He said, but with what? In everything. In everything by like what? Prayer, prayer and, and supplication. supplication. Let with, your... Okay. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Let, let your, your request, request be made. known. Make Thank known you. unto God. Thank you so much. And we appreciate... <laughs> wow. So, you are just praying for your husband or your wife, not Sister Titi or Sister Ojo. That estate is there in the spirit. And so, when you have loved that person, when the person comes physically, you, are, you have already loved the person before the person showed up. So, you don't have any, any dream, any, any, any idol in your mind. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Can we appreciate Brother Tonu for that? Kill Ace. Tell your neighbor, kill Ace. You can kill it, actually. Uh, lastly, in this first round, how many of us are willing to hear Sister Evangel? You are so beautiful this morning. Wow. How many of us have heard this statement before? Marriage is beyond the wedding day. It's a common, Abby. In every single conference, we used to hear it. Uh, marriage is not beyond the wedding day. Okay. How would you prepare for marriage as against wedding? Um, all protocols duly observed. I greet um, everybody here. Good afternoon. Good morning. Sorry. Okay, we all know the statement that marriage is beyond the wedding day. However, we all I'm sure every single here, both male and female, has have in one point or the other fantasized about how they want their wedding day to be, colors, I want to be a perfect day and all of that. So imagine all the preparations people put into wedding that is just for one day. And marriage is going to last all your life. The next 30, 40, 50 years of your life, you are there. So you are supposed to put like times, times 50 of that energy you put into your wedding, into preparing for your marriage. So actually, they are, I'm going to give up some steps or some tips that you can... Um, take into consideration when preparing for marriage beyond the wedding day. Okay, so first of all, I want us to understand that we must understand the purpose of marriage. Why am I going into marriage? Why did God establish marriage? We all know that God was the one that instituted marriage, and that means he has something in his mind. He has an intention for bringing about that institution. So we have to understand why God instituted marriage for us to do it the right way, do it the way God wants us to do it. So I want us to read the book of um, Genesis, Genesis chapter, chapter 2, verse 18. It says that, and Lord said, and Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. So from here, I'll say that marriage is primarily for companionship. So you understand that marriage is primarily for companionship, to help you when you are going into marriage. It is not for procreation primarily. It is for, so in case anything happens, you just know that anything can happen there. So you know that at least I'm marrying my friend, I'm marrying someone that is my companion, so we are going to go through together. So you have to understand that marriage is primary for companionship. And um, Daddy has defined, Daddy defined um, the marriage process series we had last year. He defined marriage as a solical, intimate, and sexual relationship. Please, can, can, you, can, you, can you say that again? Can you say that again, please? Can you that define is, marriage again? Marriage is a solical, solical intimate, intimate, sexual, sexual relationship, relationship between wow. a man and between a his man wife. And a woman. Thank you. So thank that's you. marriage can, is primarily can go on. about. So secondly, I will advise the person, or if I'm preparing for marriage, pray about it. Like I've heard, whatever you are going through, whatever it is that just troubles you any way or the other, your first response should be faith. And how do you respond by faith? By praying about it. Lay it down before God. Lord, I'm trusting you for my marriage. I don't know what's in there for me, but I know you have gone ahead of me. Trust God that it's going to take you through the marriage. When praying for marriage, you should pray beyond the paparazzi we do. Pray consciously for your spouse. Pray consciously 
for your marriage. Um, I want to read the book of First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. That's just simple. Just cast it before the Lord. Lay it all down to him. So, um, because you know that marriage is a completely new terrain. We've heard about it, but for people that are married, most people have not been there before. So just trust God that instituted it, that it's going to take you through and rely on him to take you through. Okay, so um, number three, I'm... I must listen to or me myself or the person getting my friend for marriage must listen to messages around marriage in the house. I want to emphasize that. For example, the marriage process we had last year. That it taught like two. There were two series on the marriage process. It's, there's a way when you listen to messages on marriage, it just prepares your mind. You have like a just have a picture of what is, don't know exactly what is there, but it's where you have a picture of what is there and how to respond when you are there. So deck yourself by listening to message. For faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we keep hearing and hearing. That's the way strength is given to us to go through that process. So also, um, it's good to read good books on marriage. When I say good books, not just any old books. For example, books that are, um, that, are, that are suggested to you by your pastors, by elders in the house. Don't just go around reading any book on marriage because books can be poisonous. They can contain things that will destroy mm, So true. read good books on marriage in preparing for your marriage. And then lastly, I'm going to, from, sorry, going to talk, say that we interact with married people whose marriage have worked, like married people in the house that you have seen and are successful in marriage. We interact with them. And, so that's what I'm going to say for now. Mm. Wow. <laughs> So interact with those whose marriage you can see as an example, and then they will help you. Then read good books that are prescribed, not 75 keys to making your marriage work. <laughs> and by the time you open the, the keys, not your, the size of your own door. <laughs> and then you are now in trouble. You know, so please let us take note of these things. Let us take note on these things. Let us pray. Pray on these things. Pray. You know, we just have to pray concerning our marriage. You don't, don't be too spiritual to pray about, the, about them. Because some of us, we, we can suffer. Maybe it is the dealing of the Lord. Who told you? Maybe the Lord is dealing with me now. And you can, you can murmur. Which one is easier? To murmur or to pray with thanksgiving? Pray, ask everything you can ask. I don't have money to eat, Lord Jesus. I, I, I'm here on the earth. I know that you have not forgotten me, but one more, you run jelly me. And God will say your prayer. It's not difficult. It's your Father. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Please, can we help me to appreciate all these gentlemen and women here this morning? Uh, we're going to go now for a very short break. When we come back, they are going to just give us their final words for us as we round up this interaction this morning. Can we put hands together for them? You welcome back, sirs and mas on this table. We welcome you back from our break. Uh, just a final word from you to our audience today. Uh, let me start with brother Adeite Shegun. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dixon. Uh, amen. amen. Uh, now, uh, the be part of the question that says so as not to offend the law of Christ. And uh, I believe in making friends uh, among us, we must respect uh, personal, intimate space. For example, there are things you would say to a sister that we convey or that you would do that we convey the wrong message. Uh, according to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And uh, we thank God uh, our daddy uh, has shed light on this scripture that touching a woman uh, goes beyond sexual advancement or touching sensitive parts of a woman, uh, of a sister. It has to do with, uh, there are some words that you will say that we are working the, a woman's emotion. There are some words that you will say that will touch the emotional realm of that woman. So it's go, it goes beyond uh, a sexual advancement. So in order not to offend the law of Christ, we must avoid this. Yeah. And another thing, finally, is we must take it to instructions. Yeah. Instructions, like when instructions come, like uh, my pastor, uh, Pastor Adesai will say that you don't have to think it. When it's coming from a spiritual authority, uh, the person is speaking from experience, for many years of work, that you might not even be able to see. 
So you just have to obey. For example, uh, instructions have come in that, that we should avoid giving pet names to sisters. Mm. For example, you, uh, the, the name, you save the, uh, the name of a sister on your phone and uh, you put the name of the sister is Rosaline. You, yeah. put, you put sweet Rosaline at Come the back. Come on now. Uh, now. Sweet Rosaline. Sweet Rosaline. Wow. Now, now <laughs> what is the sweet angle In the Rosaline. Is Rosaline not sweet enough? Uh, exactly. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, what is sweet about the Rosaline? Uh, there is something behind that sweet. That sweet. That you are yes. not aware of. Mm. So, another thing like uh, avoid going to a sister's house alone. Mm. Uh, it's also something, but you are like, I have stature, I can undo it. Uh, you can. Uh, yes. You're, what are you, you looking you for there? Say, you are, they are, these are pitfalls. So we must just forget about, uh, you must just be under the authority, submit to the authority that has given that instruction. And another thing, for example, like having a long conversation with a sister in the sensitive period of the night, in the late, mm. late hour of the night. Chat till 1 a.m. Exactly. And you are sharing them. You say you are sharing I am. I'm just, I'm just dividing. I am. You. I just have to explain. <laughs> that something. revelation of I am. You want to, you want to finish it. Exactly. Where reverence stopped. It's not, there's something it did not hit. Exactly. That we need to, we need to hit it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Let yes, me appreciate, sir. brother. Amen. Shegu, you see, those things, if we can avoid them, we will land safely. Uh -huh. All those pet names. Why? Of every, do you give everybody pet name in church? Ari, he came me. That, that me. You now password your phone. You think your phone is private to you. You are lying. You are killing yourself. You are going against the law of Christ. The law will help us in jail. Then don't touch. Don't touch. There are many people, many guys know how to touch sisters. On their wedding day, six sisters will be crying outside. Oh! Yet, he did not propose to them, but he has touched all of them. Some men are skillful. The Lord will deliver some skillful brothers. A final word from Brother uh, Obafemi this morning. Amen. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, all I've said uh, wouldn't have been completed if I didn't... Uh, say this um, is very important also for us to check our motive when you are giving a gift. I'm uh, sorry, when you want to say something, I want to do something. Now, that which you want to say, why are you saying it? Now, you usually be uh, uh, caught in the web of, or I, I, I would say, caught in the web now. Now, we won't, we won't, you shouldn't hide under the father that he said that uh, you know, friendship is confident or your friends is your confident. Now, but wisdom should not teach you that there are sensitive things you don't discover with the sister. As a brother, that on things you don't always discuss at the, at, I mean, we discuss with a brother, with a sister as a brother. So now, for instance, now maybe uh, as, as a brother, you want to discuss with a sister that you are suffering from masturbation. Actually, you want, you want to be sincere. We want to teach you that such words, such short, short confidence. Or I, 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 I don't know how to put that. So you shouldn't discuss that. All right. Then uh, finally, um, share the friendship. Your Bible will say that Karen Kapo, Yeni Yenyo. So, but actually, Ore Koko, Oma So, 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 so it's better to share the friendship. So let it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Karen Kapo, Yeni Yeni. I call one year Joluman Jejonia. You know, eh? Uh -huh. When you want to go alone, that is when your head is broken. But when we walk together, when you see Python, you see Cobra, uh -huh, you see other, what do you know what that next take again? Mono Mono, you see all of them. When they are moving towards you, you are the one that will run. But because they are always alone, that is why they die easily. So in friendship, you must not walk alone. My sister, you say, I'm suffering from masturbation. Please be praying for me. Ooh, do you not have other brother's friend? So she's your savior now. Thank you, Brother Feb. Thank you so much, Brother Ebenezer, for that insight. That's an insight. And please, let me quickly announce this to us, that we have a series of messages on these things that you can easily... This is just to uh, whet our appetite. Before you go today, you can meet the audio department and collect those messages and take them away as you are going. Then go and bury yourself in it. Before you know it, your head will be stable. You know, some of us, we have good hearts, but our head is not correct. Yes. If you have good heart and your head is not correct, you can easily be healed. But if your heart is wrong, 
Uri, eh? I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Bro, uh, Sister Tsumishi, a final word from you. Okay. Still standing on existing protocol. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, all the pastors. And Pastor Dixon, good morning, Hello. sir. Well, sir. So, things in, that we see in people that are not marriageable. A brother or a sister that does not submit to authority is not marriageable. You have your pastor that will instruct you and you still go against that instruction. Kilo <laughs> That's what they say. That is my, uh, like my brother said, they gave instruction. Don't think it. Don't look, check the front or back or see whether I should follow. Just follow. Your own is to obey the instruction. A brother and sister that give no regard to authority can even speak against pastor. We'll go on social media, speak against pastor. And you, a brother and sister, you still want to marry that person. The day the pe person will put your own matter to on social media is coming. <laughs> a person... A brother and sister whose tongue is not bridled, because all is so. Your tongue is not bridled. Your word should have you should have your word should have gravity. You should be grave in words. Those are the things that, um, that was said of a dicking. A dicking must be grave in words. You don't just say it through, as you feel in your heart. Or but your first talk with the soldier, they know. Your tongue must be bridled. I'll read some scriptures here. James 1:17 says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart the man's religion is vain mm. James 3 verse 8 but the tongue can no man tame it is an it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison hmm. some people's words are poisonous hmm. and you want to marry such a person the day poison. the person will talk about you in the public and you feel like crying, is coming. First hmm. Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Okay. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Hmm. Your word should have grave. Even First Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. One uh, of a deacon, one that rulets well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all graffiti. Hmm. You don't just give them instruction of say this, say this. By your lifestyle, you. they will see it. Yeah. Even Titus chapter 2 verse 7. Wow, scripture is, uh, in fact, we'll read in the whole Bible <laughs> on, this, on this issue. It's, it's all over the scriptures. In all Thank things. you, sister. <laughs> Touch them. We need to, yeah. scripture is, is there. So if you still go ahead to do your own thing outside all these scriptural references, then you are on your own. Please let me to appreciate this. That to what me today. We also have messages on all our social media platforms. They are there huh? on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Let us connect to them. Let us all connect to these ones and we'll get resources that will help us and enrich our journey. Huh? You can subscribe to all the channels so you can receive notification every time these things are coming up. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, Brother Tolu. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, the whole house. Okay, um, still to the waiting brother and to the waiting sister. Um, I will advise that sister, or rather I will ask the brother, or tell the sister that such issue, he or she should not be high do. When I mean high doness now, okay, the first thought that comes to us is that, okay, it should be working. Of course, yes, it's part of it. But much more, if truly you are waiting, you should not be sleeping. Mm. You should not be high do. Mm. So, wait in the place of prayer, and also, don't be idle as though you are not working. You should, have, you should, you should, be, you should get yourself involved socially. Have a work you are, you are doing or something you are just doing. Because when you are doing that, get busy. You, you, get, you won't even have mm. time to think and weigh yourself down with thoughts that you are not married. So, don't, don't be idle. Put, okay, I, I, I have here, I said, pour your energy into service of the Lord. Mm. That energy that you are consuming and wasting over waiting, waiting, oh Lord, I'm waiting, oh Lord, I'm just pour it into service of the Lord. Because actually, even friendship that you are supposed to be doing, or that marriage is actually service. Mm. 
So we should pour all of our energy. I have some scriptures here. Okay, firstly, I'll say 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 34. He said, There is no difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things mm. of the what? Lord. Of the Lord. So when you are when you are single, you will care more for the things of the Lord. And he said, slothfulness in Proverbs. He said, slothfulness casted into deep sleep. But an I do so shall suffer hunger. Ebiakba. You get Ebiakba, but boy, you go. <laughs> Seriously. And that sister that is feeling that, okay, let me pour home my this thing. Oh, I'm, I can't wait. I can't walk. My husband that I have in view is very rich. This and that. Ebiakba, mm. you, you, in fact, you, I don't, <laughs> don't let me say some things. So, and also, such a sister, let me say this before I go to my last point. Such a sister okay. that is I do. Just like um, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13 says, he said, and we that they learn to be idle. He was talking about young women. He said, wandering about from house to house. I'm about busy bodies. When you are idle, you will just be wandering about. Yes, you'll be, you'll be busy body. You'll, you'll be, be busy body. Busy. And not only idols, but tatlas and also busy body speaking the things which they ought not to. So you, you will go and jam talk. Thank you so, so much. You will go sir. and jam talk. Beautiful. <laughs> What, just in one point, what is the last thing you want to talk about? Okay, sir? the last thing I have to talk about. You just mentioned it. Yes, sir, that such a person uh, should be in constant uh, relationship with the authorities in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Sir. That is it. Thank you so much. Uh, lastly today, uh, Sister Evangel, what's your last word, your last advice? Yes, so um, in preparing for marriage as against the wedding, one thing you must take into note is that the younger ones must be younger, like people that want to get married most, learn, be ready to learn from older ones. Like mm. we said in um, Titus chapter 2, where Paul was, was um, instructing Timothy to um, instruct the church that in chapter, Titus chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become it holiness, not false accusers, not even to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. That I said it, that young women don't know how to love their husband. They don't yes. know how to love their they children. They don't know. They don't we know. think we know, but we don't know. So we must wow. be ready to learn and follow. For example, is Ruth and Naomi. The fact that Ruth followed Naomi and then without Naomi, Ruth would not have gotten married to Boaz. That's so she true. followed all through and then wow. did it the right way. Then also focus on growing up spiritually. Like that I said, marriage cannot work between two children. It's two mature marriage cannot work between children it's between oh. matured ones so Reverend focus Bussui. on your growth build up yourself <laughs> on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost focus on growing up spiritually or praying for marriage and then lastly if you are opportuned stay around stay with families like go and live with families that way you will learn things Wisdom. that people will not tell you with your mouth. Wisdom. You just by yes. watching things happening, you will learn. You will even so you cook in the house. They will yes. correct you. They, you your said, soup is not sweet yes. today. So you will learn how to cook. Uh -huh. That is how they train you. To, so you, you have to live with people in the house. Oh, Sister Evangel, right. thank you so much. That's all. Thank you so much. Please, we need to take this. It's on YouTube. Let us hear them again and internalize them. They are going to help us. Can we also appreciate Reverend Busu? You know, all of them have been quoting. Can we appreciate this man? This man has blessed this generation. A whole lot has been released upon us to make us solid. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, mommy. Thank you so much, mommy. We bless God for your lives. This, uh, I will not go more than this today. Until next time, same time, same station, you will be joining us again from me to you go and build solid friendship and enjoy a lovely and blessed marriage <laughs>